Welcome. I'm Sid Maestri, Head of Developer Evangelism. Today we're going to look at how to use a starter project to get up and running with Zero's PHP OAuth2 SDK. All you have to do is head over to GitHub to the Zero API handle and look for this Zero PHP OAuth2 starter app. Now, to get started, we're going to download this code. You can fork this repository if you'd like, but I'm just going to go ahead and download a copy of it to my local drive. I will unzip this. And in order to run this project locally, I'm using MAMP, which is a server for running PHP projects. You might use something differently, but this is what I'm using today. And right here I've got my htdocs folder, so I'm actually going to open that up. And I've got an old copy of that project here, so I'll just drag it over here. And I'll go to my download folder, and I'm going to copy it into my htdocs folder. Now you notice when I unzip it, it's got the word master here uh, tagged on because it's not in one of the branches. I actually download the master of that repository. I'm just going to remove that. That means my callback URLs are all going to match nicely, so that's a good little thing to remember. And I want to go ahead and open this project up. So I'm going to change into that directory in my command line. And then from here, it's really easy. If I'm using an IDE like Visual Studio Code, I can just type code period and hit enter and it's going to launch Visual Studio and I'll be inside my directory so I can see all of my PHP files here. Now you'll notice we only have three files that we're using for this project and we also have a composer.json file for managing our dependency. Now our only real dependency is going to be the zero uh, SDK which is version 2.0.5. As of this recording, you might be using a newer version of the SDK in the future. That's okay. Uh, so we've got three, PH, or three PHP files here, plus a fourth index file. And then we've also got one more class here, a storage class. This is not a database connector. This is just a way to store your tokens and information that you need temporarily stored into a session variable. So you'll want to replace an, uh, this with an implementation to save your tokens to a database. But let's start with what we really need, which is a pair of API keys to run this code. So if I tried to run it right now, it wouldn't succeed because it's missing a few bits of information. I'll open up my authorization.php file and you'll see that we need a client ID and a client secret. So let's go and get that first. I will head over to developer.zero.com and click on My Apps. You will need a Zero login for this. You can go and create your Zero login for free. It's really easy. I'll just go back to the home page and just show you how to get that. You can create a free Zero user account. It never expires. And attached to every user account is a demo company. So if you click on this green Getting Started button, you'll see here we can sign up for a Zero user account, and we can also learn about how to enable our demo company. Now I've done all that already, so we could just head over, head over to My Apps because I'm logged in. All right, let's click New App. I'm going to give my app a name. I'm going to call it Sid PHP Starter Demo. I'll give it a company URL. I'll give it a privacy policy URL. And then I need a OAuth2 redirect URI. Well, what is that? That's my callback. So after I go to zero to authorize my app, I'll then be redirected back to my local host. And I need to have the full path that takes me to my callback.php page. Now, if you look in this code under the authorization PHP file, you'll see we have a redirect URI set. So as long as you're running um, something like MAMP that's pointed to port 8888, and this is the folder where your starter app is, and it's got a file in it called callback.php, 
And then that is the redirect URI that you're going to want to enter under My Apps. Now these need to match. What you put in here has to match what's in your code. So I've got those matching and I'll say Create App. All right, that's looking good. And you can see I've got a client ID, but I don't have a secret yet, so I will generate my secret. And I'm gonna copy my client ID, and I'll paste it here. And I'll copy my secret. And I'll paste that there. And now that I've got those copied, I can hit save. Now you'll notice that the client secret goes away and you cannot access it any longer. So it's important that you get that copied before you hit the save button. So we're all done with that. And we will need the client ID and secret in a few other places. So I'm gonna copy it. And we'll also need that in the callback. So I'll paste it there. And that is all we need. So, oh, sorry, authorization resource. I need to do it here as well. Sorry. So three places I need to set that. And save my files. So all my files have been set up and they're all ready to go. So let's just take a quick look at authorization.php and let's talk about what's happening here. So I am creating an instance of my storage class because I'm going to store some information there. I set my ID, secret, redirect URI. This is using the league OAuth2 um, PHP library. So this isn't part of the SDK necessarily. This is just another dependency that we've added into the SDK. So it's really easy for you. You can use another OAuth client if you want, um, but this is what we bundle with this SDK. We also have something really important here. We have our scopes. Now these scopes are what's going to define what resources you're asking to get access to. You can see there's a lot of different resources I'm getting access to. Uh, it's very important to note that the open ID email and profile is part of logging in if you're using single sign up or single sign on with zero and there's an offline access scope this will mean that you will get a refresh token returned and it'll allow you to refresh your access token uh, indefinitely uh, but you do need to refresh every 60 days for that refresh token to get uh, fresh so once you get all that set up with your options then you can get the authorization url and what you get back is a URL that you can then redirect to. So that's what happens in authorization. And then on the callback, you come back and you get, you basically check, say, you know, did the code that I set, is it correct? You know, you wanna check the state against what you set as your authorization state. You wanna make sure that nobody's, uh, you know, trying to inject uh, into your code here, some sort of you know, man-in-the-middle attack. So you want to check the state. That's all handled for you. And then what we do is we take our authorization code that gets returned to us. So we get the authorization code and we pass it in here. And what we get back from zero is an actual access token. And then we set that access token right here. We say access token, get token. And we set that into our con uh, default configuration. And then we pass that configuration into our identity, inst uh, our identity API instance. What is identity? Well, this is how Zero keeps track of what organizations this user has authorized. My user account might connect to 10 different orgs, uh, but I've only authorized one of those orgs. Maybe I've authorized five of those organizations. Well, when I set up an identity instance, I can call get connections and it will return an array of all the organizations or tenants that I've connected to. And from that, I will wanna grab the tenant ID. So right here in my storage, I'm just getting the first tenant ID. So I say results and I get the first item in my array. If you are authorized against five different tenants, 
maybe you want to have a drop down box with all the different tenant names and your user can sw switch between the different orgs that they've connected to. It's really however you want to architect your app. But this is just a starter project. It's just to demonstrate how to do your authentication, get your access token, get your tenant ID. Now, once you have those two pieces, you can then go over to the authorized resource PHP file, which you get redirected to. And from here, you can start making API calls and we've got like five different kinds of API calls we'll show you how to make. So I think that's enough talking about the code. Let's actually try and run this. So I'll come over here and let's get rid of that. And I wanna to go to the zero PHP OAuth2 starter. And it shows me a connect to zero button. So let's go ahead and click that. Oops, <laughs> very important. I got to install my dependencies, of course. So let's go ahead and do that. That was silly of me. So I have to write, go in here and write in um, composer install. All right. And so now we've installed all of our dependencies. Let's go back to our browser. Let's try that one more time. I'll click uh, connect to zero. There we can see the name of my app right here at the top. It says what I want to get access to, all these different bits of data. And I'll just come in here and I'll choose the demo company to connect to and say, allow access. All right, so it redirected me back to my callback. It then swapped my code for an access token and then it stored my access token and my tenant ID that it retrieved into my storage class, which is a session variable. And now I'm on my authorization, authorized resource page and I can do some different things like I can say get organization. It's my demo company. I can create one contact, create a contact called foobar. I can get invoices using filters. I found 11 invoices. I can get contacts using filters as well. I got 57 contacts and I can create multiple contacts with the summarize errors parameter passed in there. So let's see what happens there. All right, my first contact was created, but my second contact, I got a validation error because I tried to create the same contact with the same name twice, which zero doesn't allow. So that's pretty much it. If you go in and take a look at authorized resources, you can see that we're simply passing in, you know, the number one, means get organization. If the action's number two, we uh, create a contact. And here it shows that we create a instance of person, of contact person. We populate the contact person. We set it into a person's array. And then we set the contact persons with this array of persons. We, do, we also set the name of our contact, first name, last name, email. And then we add that contact into an array of contacts. And then we set that on the contacts object. So zero is expecting an array of contacts. You might only pass one contact object in that array, or you might pass 10 contacts into that array. Um, whichever case it is, it is uh, expecting an array of contacts. And so you need to make sure that you um, push those contacts into an array and then set those uh, appropriately. And then the last thing we do is on our API instance, we call the create contacts method. We pass in our tenant ID and our array or our contacts object. And then when we get back, we get our response. And from that response, we can pull back get contacts. We look at the first item in that array and we can get the name from that. And this is similar, you know, we do similar things. This is a little more complicated. This is getting all the invoices that were created after the first, or sorry, the second of a 
uh, January 2019 with a specific timestamp. So you can pass that in. We also are looking for ones that are of type um, uh, accounts receivable. And we also want ones that have the status of draft and submitted. So you can pass in multiple filters and those filters that get set as parameters here in this get invoices call. And uh, if we get a response back, if we have more than zero, then we say that. Otherwise, we say we didn't find any invoices that were matching. So this is a really nice, good starter project for you to understand the OAuth flow, how to set your API keys, as well as how to get a tenant ID, and then use that access token and tenant ID to make some basic as well as some more advanced API calls. So take a look at the documentation. There's lots of good information. And I want to mention one more thing. In addition to this starter project, we actually have what we call a kitchen sink app or a companion app uh, for our different SDKs. And if I search for PHP, we have an app here called uh, zero PHP OAuth 2 app and this has an array of um, endpoints that are tested and you can see the code that is used to make all the different API calls and this is all the accounting endpoints all the different um, methods that you can call on them it's really useful but it is a much larger example uh, piece of example code and so we have the starter project for people who are looking for some code that they could use in their app today this companion app is more, I want to learn about all the different endpoints and how to do all the cool stuff that's available with Zero's PHP SDK. So with that, I'm going to sign off. But if you have questions, leave them in the comments below. Subscribe to our channel, and we look forward to hearing from you. Take care.